Last time we talked about charging a capacitor. This time we're going to talk about a discharging a capacitor situation. Uh, so what we have here are our plates. So this is our capacitor, capacitance C, and we're going to have it charged to voltage V0. So we're beginning with a charged capacitor. We're going to hook that up to a resistor, resistor resistance R. We'll throw a switch in here just for good measure. And then that's our circuit. So this already has um, voltage V0 across it because it's already charged. So we could say that the charge on that capacitor is the capacitance times V0. Uh, so before we begin any derivations, let's look at how things are at time equals zero. So looking at that, the voltage across the capacitor is equal to V0. This is as soon as we flip the switch, time equals zero. Voltage across the capacitance is not zero. Shoot. So we're going to look at how things are in this circuit when time is equal to zero. And that's the moment we flip the switch and start timing. So we've just completed our circuit. So at time equals zero, the, the voltage of the capacitor is equal to V0. The charge on the capacitor is the capacitance times V0. And the current in the circuit is full. Right? We have all these charges here, and all these charges here, and what they want more than anything else is to get together. So at the beginning, this has push equal to V0 to get all those charges through this resistance here. So the current at the beginning is going to start off with a value of um, V0 over R. Now, a long time later, and we'll just say time equals infinity, a long time later, all of these charges have trickled through the circuit, and, and the voltage on my capacitor is now zero because the charge on my capacitor is now zero. They're all gone. So because there's no voltage and there's no more charge to move, my current is equal to zero. Now, in this case, we can see that the charge is decreasing as a function of time. So if we're going to look at the current in this situation, we could say that it's dq over dt, but in, in this situation, we're going to have to make it negative because we are losing charge as time goes on. We're experiencing a loss of charge, so it's going to be negative dq over dt. Now, it's an important distinction to make because we're going to need that as we as we go through looking at some time in the middle when time is equal to t, and we want to look at the charge as a function of time. In order to do that again, we're going to have to look at our Kirchhoff loop, where we start here and we go, I know that's yellow and you can't really see it, but we're going to go all the way around. So looking at this, this loop uh, beginning, we pick up the voltage across the capacitor. Now we're at some time in between these two. That's what we're looking at. Time is equal to T. So the voltage across the capacitor is just V. So I got zero equals the voltage of the capacitor minus IR, and there's nothing else there. So we have voltage from the capacitor. We drop it all over the resistor at any given time. So, so looking at this, the voltage across the capacitor, voltage of the capacitor is equal to IR. Well, we need to plug in for charge. I, I know, again, that capacitance is Q over V, so the voltage is going to be um, Q over the capacitance is equal to, I'm going to plug that in, negative DQ over DT times my resistance. So, again, we're going to do some separation of variables stuff. We're going to have dt over rc, but we're going to make that negative. And that's equal to dq over q. So we've, we've done our separation of variables. We're set up, and we are ready to integrate. So when we integrate, we're going from 0 to some later time t. And when time is 0, at this point, my initial condition for charge that's Q0. So we start off <coughs> we start off at Q0, Q0, and we go to some later charge 
Q. Those are going to be my limits. So over here we've got um, negative T over RC is equal to the natural log of Q uh, minus Q0. So Q over Q0. Natural log of Q over my initial charge. So the next thing we're going to do is raise each of these, make them the powers on E, brings me up here. And I've got E to the negative T over RC is equal to, well, I just have Q over my initial Q0. So Q0 times E to the negative T over RC is equal to Q as a function of time. This tells me how that charge is going to And if we look at our graph of Q as a function of time, it makes sense that we start off at this value because it's the same value we have for Q when we begin with, Q, and we die exponentially. That's this function right here. And if we wanted the current as a function of time, we would just um, take the derivative of this and we'd see, again, the same sort of shape for the current, I as a function of time, where we start off at our initial current and we die as time goes on. Um, that's the basics for discharging a capacitor. Looking at what we did in class on, on Friday, we had a, a rather complicated circuit and I'm going to walk through that real quick. So let's draw that circuit. We've got a battery. We said it was 3000 volts. Connected to that we have one resistor which is 5 times 10 to the fifth ohms. That's R1. Then we have R2 um, and we said that was 10 times 10 to the fifth ohms. That was one loop. And on the other loop, we had a capacitor. And that capacitor had a value of 5 microfarads. And, and so we looked at a couple of different times with this. And there was a switch in there. So what we're going to do first is look at just as the switch is closed. So when time is equal to zero, we're going to look at what's happening. Now, my capacitor is initially uncharged, so the charge on the capacitor when time is equal to zero is zero, meaning that the voltage on the capacitor when time is equal to zero <coughs> is zero. Now, for more information about what we have going on, we kind of have to look at our Kirchhoff loop. So, starting here, right? I'm going to have 3,000 volts right here at this point from the battery when time equals zero. And then we're going to drop some, and we're going to have 3,000 volts minus I times R1 right here at this point. And that's the same voltage that we have over here at this point. That's what it means to be in parallel. Now, if the voltage of this thing initially is zero, that, that means that down here, the voltage, well, and then down here we know that we're on the other side of the battery, so the voltage has to be zero. So over here the voltage has to be zero, and over here the voltage has to be zero. Since we don't drop anything off the capacitor, there's no change in voltage between this point and this point, I know the voltage here at this point has to be zero, which means that 3000 V minus IR1 is zero. So, so initially it, it, it appears that if the voltage is zero here and the voltage is zero here, there is no current running through this to begin with. Um, and so looking at that, the current from the battery or, or current one is just going to be um, 3,000 volts over 5 times 10 to the fifth ohms, or, or the current from that battery comes out to be, what is that, 
0.006 amps at that point. That's the current through here. And the current through this one initially is zero. Those are all of our initial conditions because the capacitor is accepting as much charge as possible. Um, now, as time goes on, the capacitor is going to begin to fill up. And as time goes on, we know, let's say, as time approaches infinity, as that thing begins to fill up, um, we will have some voltage across the capacitor, and we'll figure out what that is in a second. The voltage across the capacitor um, is going to be equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the capacitance. Once we figure out the, the voltage on that capacitor, we'll know what's going on. But I know that once it's full, okay, um, let me erase some of this stuff. I don't need this anymore. Don't need this anymore. I don't want that arrow there. Now, looking at this, I know that the voltage has to be zero across here. And I know it's still going to be 3000 V minus I1 R1. But at this point, the voltage is going to be equal to the voltage on the capacitor. And the voltage on the capacitor will be such that it is pushing up against whatever the voltage here is at this point. And there's not going to be any current running through here. So in, in this stretch right here, the current is equal to zero. Which means all of my current is going to be running through here. So the current in this branch, current from the battery, the current through resistor one, now the current through resistor two, we'll make sure we know that that's the current through resistor two, is 3,000 volts divided by 15 times 10 to the fifth um, ohms. Or, or, or now the current from the battery, the current through resistor 1, the current through resistor 2 is um, a third of what it was before. 0 0.003 amps. So there's no current running through here. There is current running through here. And this is still true for the voltage at that point. So whatever this voltage is will be equal to the voltage of the capacitor. So if we needed to find the voltage of the capacitor, um, we could say that the voltage of the capacitor is equal to 3,000, I'm sorry, 3,000 volts minus 0 0.003 minus 0 0.003 times 5 times 10 to the fifth ohms. And, and so what we see for that is 3,000 minus, uh, I'm sorry, that's not 0.03, that's 0 0.02, 0 0.002. So that leaves me with 2,000 volts on the capacitor. That's going to be my final voltage. So that's this whole circuit in the nutshell. The problem in class didn't have us find the capacitance as a function of time, and I really won't either. But if we wanted to, not the capacitance, the charge of the capacitor, it would go from, if this is Q and this is time, it would go from zero to whatever value of Q this voltage corresponds to with Q over C. You can find the energy from there quite easily as well. Now this problem was more complicated in that it had one more thing going on. So looking at this problem, we also saw that we opened up this switch at some point, and then at our new time, time equals, let's say, T, my circuit turned into a capacitor discharging over this resistance, which was R2, 10 times 10 to the fifth. My capacitance is still five microfarads, but I know that at this new time, the voltage at this time is equal to 2,000 volts. That's how much was on the capacitor. And it's going to discharge all of this voltage now across this resistor. So at the beginning here, when we open the switch again, the current is equal to the voltage on the capacitor, 2,000 volts, divided by R2. And when you do that, it turns out to be, again, point. 002 amps.
still coming through this thing. Now as time goes on, time goes to infinity again, um, that current is going to drop down to zero. My capacitor will completely discharge over the thing, over the resistor. And all of the energy stored in here will be lost as heat. Um, this is just sort of a look at how capacitors work in series. If there's one general thing I wanted you to want you to take from that, it's that the voltage on the capacitor when it's in parallel is equal to the voltage on the element that it's in parallel with. And we'll look at more and more examples of this because it's going to come up and we're going to need 